it was everything uh, I wanted it to be and a lot more. So I'm grateful to you guys for being early supporters of what's going to become uh, 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 the next biggest thing since Dragon Ball Z, as I always said. It would. <laughs> so I want to show the clip you sent me. What I said, film. I don't remember what I said. I you. think it was the short film. <laughs> okay, <laughs> how the world it's began. So yeah, how on. the world began. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, just just to give people a taste of, of what you've been doing behind the scenes, and and people, you're gonna love this. Uh, and then we'll 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 get to the questions. In a future much closer than most think, the event long predicted by top scientists occurred. The world ended. Yes, mankind's insatiable appetite to create, replicate, and improve life ironically led to his own demise. But different than most anticipated, artificial intelligence and other forms of future tech did not take over for long. Within a few short decades, after humans retreated to the deepest caves and most remote areas across the planet, the ultra-advanced technology suddenly imploded. It seems the intelligence we invented was unwittingly programmed with the same faulty logic as its creator, and therefore befell an identical, tragic outcome self-destruction. As a result of their inability to rely on technology, mankind was forced to look at themselves for the answers. A small, esoteric group of people began to rise to power. They represented the fraction of 1% of every population who can access much higher percentages of the brain's function. Over time, these people began to display abilities once considered to be magic, myth, and fiction. Telekinesis, telepathy, mind reading, energy manipulation, levitation, teleportation, all became commonplace among them. It was through their example that humanity relearned the wisdom once known by the highest civilizations of the ancient world. True power comes from within. These new leaders were called Lumineers, engineers of light. Together, they built a new world underground. This new world societies formed caste systems based on an individual's powers of luminescence. Those with the highest abilities ruled. Those with the lowest became slaves. That was the way of what became known as the ancient new world. Since it required a specialized knowledge and mental capacity to luminesce, education became the most prized commodity. Therefore, education was reserved for the rich or royal few so they could maintain power in what was considered a harmonious balance of order. In this ancient new world, all machines and every form of artificial intelligence had become outlawed because these were the tools of the desperate, uneducated poor attempting to mimic the power of luminescence. Anything that could not be fashioned by hand or manifested by the mind became obsolete. Eventually, Humans ascended from the caves and converged around the world's ancient ruins, the only places built strong enough to withstand the scorched earth. The most intact structures were those surrounding the great pyramids of ancient Nubia and Egypt, which is where the most powerful nations of the ancient new world formed. All civilians were given the option to live within the predetermined social strata or leave to build their own kingdoms. Some stayed, many left. Unfortunately, the lower nature of the least educated 
and therefore less able people led to jealousy, envy, and greed. It wasn't long before they started developing weapons and building armies. Soon, humanity was once again at war with itself. It is in this futuristic, dystopian world that we begin our story. That hot fire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That one, my guy. That's there is standing ovations going on in my head right now. Mm -hmm. That, that, let them get that out of there because, uh, that's some, that's some, that's some wild stuff you got going, my guy. You was, mm -hmm. was over there really cooking in that lab, wasn't you? <laughs> it, it just, um, well, again, it was really just an attempt for me. There were a lot of questions uh, that people had for for season one about how the world became what it was at the time of the start of that first episode. And so I said, well, let me explain it to you. And so that's really what led me on a journey to a, to create that context. And that's why, it, you know, that the, the short film just led into this is where the world this is where the world is as our story begins. And so um, there's a lot of, I don't know, you know, if you guys really get deep into the storytelling of things, but there was a lot of uh, implications that I built into that story that really people caught on to, that the, the implications of what it would mean if these things happened. Or um, So that's kind of what really brought on the idea that it should be more than just an origin story, but turn it into a short film that we could shop into something more expansive when it comes to the Black Line of Cubs universe. That's what I'm talking about. Trey Mosley, voice actor, uh, actor, Supreme, the specialist himself. He's a, I Emmy nominated. A Emmy nominated. <laughs> voice actor. Exactly. <laughs> Says, I want to play a bad guy, please. Uh, <laughs> yes, my brother. Yes, my. I got plenty of bad guys in the, in this story. So, uh, and uh, have plans now that the story took off in the way that it did. You know, have so much opportunity and room for. Like I said, a more expansive universe that in, that is beyond just you know the, the Black Lion and Cubs characters. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, thank you, my brother. Congratulations, Trey. I, I, what I want to say before we get to the questions is that watching you move in the fashion that you've been moving has been nothing short of inspiring. Um, thank you. You're you're putting something out that's not just fodder, right? And and the inspiration. Mm -hmm were your kids and just seeing something that needed to be passed on to the next generation. And, and dude, I, I got to congratulate you. Like, Thank you, big brother. You, you know, you, you are the epitome of what they mean by standing on business. <laughs> still, like I, like me and me, me and Hotep, Hotep has spoken on many occasions. Mm -hmm. And when he said he going to do something, he knew it. It's done. It, yeah, it's probably it's more likely done already. <laughs> yeah. yeah, true, true, true. Well, you know, one of the, the sayings that I'm really starting to move forward with is the idea that you know, you know, the idea that look, I haven't, I don't come to play, I come to win. You understand? And that's why you and I connected. Is you know, when I started in this space and introduced myself as a person that's about to make some moves, significant moves in the anime, comic world, manga world, and such. I came to you. I said, listen, man, you know. 
please know I have a history of, of creation and I have a long history in entrepreneurship. And don't get it twisted that just because I'm a newcomer to the anime space, don't think I'm going to come at it, you know, anything short of with black excellence, you know. And that's what I hope uh, I've demonstrated thus far. And, you know, you guys are seeing what I've done in, in a year and I'm just getting started, man. I, and I'm, like I said, what you see, what you've seen is only 20 percent of what's already already been developed, you know. Right. So thank you for that, my brother. Thank you. And, and, and to your point, I hope I'm glad it's inspiring to other people. You understand? Because I really hope that I can use myself and my journey as an example to other people in the creative spaces as to what can be accomplished, how soon it can be accomplished, um, you know, who and with or without it can be accomplished. So that's really one of my my goals is to blaze a trail and set an example that other people can follow. Hey.